Hi everybody, in this video I'm now going to explain the diagrams that you can draw to show third degree price discrimination. In a separate video I've explained what third degree price discrimination is and the conditions that have to be satisfied in order for it to take place and also why a firm might want to use this. So let's look now at how we can show in diagrams the benefit to a business of using third degree price discrimination. So first of all, if we look at this diagram on the right hand side, we know that if a firm is price discriminating, they have a degree of power over the price setting. They're likely to have monopoly power and or be in an oligopoly. And let's look at if they're charging the same price to all of their customers, so not price discriminating, they would have a diagram like this, which we're familiar with. And we know that they are profit maximizing, they produce where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, this quantity. We find the price using the demand curve, P, and then we find out how much supernormal profit they're making when we bump into the long run average cost curve and we come across. So the supernormal profit here is P, A, B, C. What we can then draw is two other situations where we're actually going to charge a different price to these different customers who have got different PEDs. So these are the consumers with inelastic PED, relatively inelastic, it looks like an I for inelastic. And here, these consumers have relatively elastic PED. So as in the other video, this, for instance, might be people who are working and have got quite high incomes. These people might be students or pensioners and have more elastic PED. They're more sensitive to price. So let's take across. We need to take across our marginal costs and our long run average cost. Remember, it's exactly the same product being sold in these markets as in this market. It's just the same product. So our marginal cost and our average cost is going to be exactly the same. But now we're just going to be charging a different price to the people with inelastic PD to the people with elastic PD. So what I've done here is at this quantity, when I bump into the marginal cost curve, I've then just drawn across their marginal cost. And then when I've bumped into long run average cost, I've just drawn across here for the long run average cost curve. And then you can just do as you would normally over here to find out what your supernormal profit is. So you find out your quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And then you need to find out from there your quantity. So that's your quantity. You go up to your demand curve to find your price. So this is your price in this market. So this is your price. These are your costs. I've actually drawn this a bit low down. If you did your demand curve higher up, you're going to have a bigger supernormal profit, A, B. So the supernormal profit here is P, A, B, C. And then in this market, this is people with inelastic PD. Again, marginal cost equals marginal revenue there. I have made this very, very inelastic so that it would work for the diagram. So this is our quantity just there. And then this is our price using our demand curve to find our price here. And then we use our long run average cost when we bump into that as normal to see what our costs are. And then this area, the B is here, by the way, on this corner. So this area, P, A, B, C, is our supernormal profit. And now what you can see from this is here, this is our supernormal profit. Remember in the exam, don't do shading. Make sure that you label the corners and say P, A, B, C when you're writing. But I'm just going to do this to show you here. So this is the supernormal profit. All of this. And so you can then illustrate that the reason this is good for the business is because the super normal profit here, let's call this A, plus super normal profit in the market B, 
is greater than the supernormal profit in, let's call this N for normal, everyone's paying the same price, N. So this area plus this area, when you add them together, is greater than this area. So that's why it's worth their while charging different prices to different customers for the same product. We can then look at why this is good for consumers or in some cases bad for consumers. So good things, positives for the consumer. Some of the consumers will have a lower price, not all, but some people are now paying this lower price and they would have been paying this price so it would have been higher so there's a lower price for some people also it's possible that the business will now use all of this super normal profit to what we call cross subsidize some products so there might be a product which doesn't make the firm very much profit or it might even sometimes make a small loss. For instance, bus services in small villages in the daytime. And if they're price discriminating on some lines for their buses, they might be making so much supernormal profit that they can actually keep running the services at the quiet times. So they can use their supernormal profits to cross subsidize some of their products which means for the consumers that want those products that would be really good also it's possible that the supernormal profits might be invested by the business and this might cause quality to go up it might also mean that in the long run efficiency for the business will go up which would cause price to go down which would also be good for consumers we don't know that these things would happen but they might do for the producer, the most obvious thing here is the positive that their profits have gone up. The supernormal profits are higher. This might be good for shareholders because they might receive bigger dividends. And it might lead to increased investment, which ultimately may cause costs to come down and supernormal profits to go up. This is also bad, though, for the consumers who are having to pay the higher price. People with the inelastic PED might now pay a higher price than they would have normally, this price. And for consumers, a lot of these benefits might not actually happen. They may not use the profits to cross-subsidise. They might not invest to the benefit of consumers. It might just be that shareholders end up taking all of this money. And also from an economic point of view, this is because it's in a market structure where the firm has a degree of price setting power, this is not allocatively or productively efficient. So it also isn't economically efficient. It's not good for the allocation of resources if you're looking very generally.